Thank you very much for this opportunity to show the demo. A real quick introduction. So my name is Sergey Sergeyev. I'm sharing point and O365 developer and consultant. Office as office development MVP. Yeah, right. And most of the time I work as independent contractor. However, recently I have started a new brand and company called Mastic. So I'm going to develop it and in future I'm planning to sell some things for SharePoint, of course, under this brand. So in my demo, I want to show you SharePoint typed item that's uh, VS Code add-in I've uh, created recently. Fortunately, that's the only slide I have, so let's go ahead and see the demo. Okay, I have a website, a team site, Kung Fu, Kung Fu Gophers. I know probably they're not so powerful as Warrior Horses by Chris Kemp, but anyway. I have a list called um, upcoming events here. And imagine that you have a task to to create a web part, SharePoint framework web part, to show the data from this list from upcoming events. And I have prepared some very basic um, as prefix React web part, and I've added a code which gets all items from the list using a prefix native way, using a PHP client, and using PinPJS, of course. And here you see that, um, let's say I get only the first one, the first item, and I want to show something, let's say, title. And both of examples have uh, one issue, that this item has any type. So what does it mean? It means that my item object uh, has any properties. I can type something like this, or I can type... For example, if I want to display, let me actually start and serve. If I want to display, uh, let's say, venue, right, I should, I should write venue like this. And the issue here is that we do not have IntelliSense from VS Code. We do not, we do not have uh, build time checking from TypeScript compiler, and in general, that's this uh, pattern considered as bad practice for TypeScript development, and uh, you should avoid using any. Fortunately, you can fix it very quickly by introducing a new interface. Let's call it upcoming events, like this, and we can include, let's say, title and venue here, right? And I should change this any to upcoming events, and now I have IntelliSense and all good stuff. And if we let's go and I have uh, I have hosted workbench here. Let's refresh the page, and I have the venue is in the big oak, right? Right, that's right. And if you want to display any other field like this uh, description, etc., then you should type another field under this interface, etc., etc. And this process quickly becomes routine. And that's the reason why I've created SharePoint type item, a Visual Studio Code extension, which automates the process of creating such kind of interfaces for for using them inside SharePoint framework with PNPJS or using PHP client, it doesn't matter. So uh, how to how to use it? Let's first of all let's go ahead and install it. You should search for SharePoint typed item. I have it installed already. Now let's go to uh, let me save it and let's go to uh, VS Code settings.json. You should manage uh, settings for the extension under VS Code settings.json or in a separate file. You have two options. Let's go ahead and uh, add new configuration for this extension under settings.json. So there is an entry, and you have also have an intelligence here. You should provide a few required properties like site URL, 
So I'm going to use my Kung Fu Gophers website. You should also provide an output path. Let's say uh, I want to generate my interfaces under src slash generated. And also I should explicitly specify which lists or content types, uh, content types are also supported, which lists, uh, in other words, for which lists I want interfaces to be generated. So in my case, I'm going to generate an interface for my upcoming events list. So I'm going to use URL settings and list slash upcoming events like this, as far as I remember. Yep. And basically, this is it. That's the minimal configuration you should provide in order to make it work. Now call your VS Code command palette and type SharePoint and select generate interfaces. If you run it for the first time, uh, it will ask you for uh, for authentication details. You see it supports on-premises as well. I am using online here, so I select SharePoint online. I select, uh, let's use Arduino authentication. And let me provide my um, authentication details, like client ID and client secret in just a few seconds, right? like this. Now in the bottom you see this flashing message saying that it was generating interfaces and finally I have I have this folder and subfolder and I have a file called upcoming events. So if I open I see that it generated for me all the fields I have uh, in my in my initial upcoming events list. So now I can simply remove this one, this interface completely and instead I'm going to use upcoming events like yeah like this way. And of course, I should uh, provide an import statement. Now let's save. And now if you type uh, item dot and you see that uh, it shows you intelligence for all the fields available. So I can uh, show description, venue, etc, etc. Um, if you have a need to, let's say, add a new column, let's add um, hyperlink field and call it, um, let's say, uh, my my info, for example, save it, and let's add some actual URL here, for example, um, HTTP, some URL, and please go here, save. So I've added a new field, and currently my upcoming events um, interface doesn't have this field included. So I should again call the command palette and select generate interfaces once again. And one, okay, of course there is an error. <laughs> yeah, occasionally it happens uh, if we are running Gulp serve. So let's simply try it once again. So this time it worked. Uh, I have my interfaces regenerated, and now I can use it in such a way. My info dot. Let's say I want to output description. Let's save it. Let's see the build is completed. Yep. And let's refresh our web part. And now I have my description for, from the link I have just added, right? Um, there are additional options you can configure here. For example, if you don't like the, oops, sorry, if you don't like the file name, you can change it to, let's say, EI coming events. Click save and click generate interfaces once again. And this time, And this time it should, uh, it should change it to I upcoming events. Okay, yeah. 
you see this new, new name and you should fix it here and here and here. Additionally, you can provide filters for fields. If you don't want all fields to be included, included sorry, you can exclude hidden. You can also exclude field by internal name like this way. So um, for advanced scenarios, please use uh, the extension's official web page. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much for watching. Awesome. Very cool demo. That's going to be a great feature for a lot of folks.